Greetings. One of my work colleagues bought a charger for his iPod the other week. He's bought it from eBay. Here's the listing. As you can see, a bargain. And this is what has turned up. Those familiar with the EEV blog will recognise this because Dave Jones has received one today through the post as well. He's received the Australian one with a different angled pins. This one is, uh, I think it's American standard, and it came with this adapter as well. So I took one look at this and said, don't use that, bloody thing's a fire risk. So I've given him a TomTom -tom charger instead, which is 5 volts, uh, either 1 or 2 amps, I can't remember which, which will do the job nicely. So he's given me this to inspect, shall we say. I know Dave Jones is no doubt going to review his, and he's got better test equipment than me. Uh, he's got better meters, better scopes and everything. So he'll probably wipe the floor with my review, but um, I'm going to have a crack at it anyway. Here's a close-up view of the back. Here's my test gear. This is connected straight to the mains just so I can switch the power on and off. Although I don't have the luxury of my soft start mains conditioner over here. I'm in the house rather than in the workshop. And there's a pretty good chance that if I switch this off and on, that Variac will trip the breaker for the, for the ring main in the house. It's done it twice already. I've only knocked it on three times and twice it's popped the breaker. I also have my mains power analyzer. We can ignore the current. Oops. We can ignore the current reading on this today because this thing is designed for reading like three thousand amps, not hundreds of milliamps really. So th at this sort of power, we can ignore that. It is connected up. As you can see, we've got the Lenflex cable there wrapped around that lead. But we'll ignore that. We'll just use that to monitor the power, the mains voltage output from the Variac. What else do we have? Right, we have two meters here. The one on the left is measuring the voltage output from the power supply. The one on the right, my fluke, is measuring the current drawn by the power supply. Sorry, not drawn by the power supply drawn by the dummy load. The dummy load is a standard Dave Jones special, one of the EEV vlog ones, which have cobbled together just for this test. I'll build it properly when my meter and variable resistor arrive. I ordered them from eBay last week and I've given up waiting now. What else we have? We've got the scope, my trusty old Hameg HM205, and there's that power supply there which is just running that. It's providing I think about 20 volts. It's going to an 8 volt regulator there, which is driving the, the dummy load circuit. So let's give it some juice. There we go. Let's take it down a bit. There, that'll do. You can see we've got 5.3 volts out. You can see it on the scope as well, this little peak for some reason there. We're drawing about 35 milliamps. So let's take that up. 180 milliamps, a lot more noise on here. Seems to settle back down as I take it up. We're still 5.3 volts at the moment, so fairly stable. I know Mike over at Mike's Electric Stuff, he reviewed one of these chargers, not this type, <clears throat> but a similar, but another cheap Chinese charger which came with a four port hub. And that thing was atrocious, the regulation was awful on it. You can see this seems to be fairly well regulated, if a little bit noisy on the scope. Still just over 5 volts, around 600 milliamps. 
800, 900. Dummy load's quite cool, so I can go further than this. One amp. We're on five volts now at one amp. One point three. It's rated at one amp. We're up to one point three. It's starting to creep down four point seven volts. The current draw has actually gone up a bit now. Let's take a look on here. Oh yes, look at that. That's the current draw. You can see now as I'm taking that further, it's starting to drop back down on the scope. That's a horrible waveform. This is only a 20 megahertz scope. Hopefully when Dave does his review, he may be able to look into that in a bit more detail. And it's gone down, 1.7 amps. Let's take it back to within spec, back down to an amp, and there we go, 5 volts. Taking down to nothing, or well, next to nothing. So it's not too bad, it's fairly well regulated for such a, no doubt, a cheap and nasty charger. Let's take that back up to a half amp load. No, let's take it up to one amp load. There we go. Five volts, one amp. Now the power supply is rated at 100 to 240 volts on the back on, on the back label. Let's see. Let's give it some beans. That's up to 277 volts. It's happy with that. Interestingly, the output voltage is starting to drop now. So take it down to 140 volts. Dodgy bit on the variac there. 120 volts. That's interesting. It's supposed to be 100 to 240 volts. Let's take it down to 100 volts. Yet yeah, that's only putting out 1.1 volt at 1 amp. So that label's bullshit. I take the current draw back down. What a brilliant time for your meter to trip out. Take the current draw back down. So at 100 volts it can only manage about half an amp. I tested it in an amp now. You see that's fairly well regulated then, albeit it can't handle one amp down to there. So it's really, it's a half amp power supply really. Now this one wants to go off. All right. So let's take you down further. Squeaky old Variac. Down to 40 volts now. So I'm well below what it what it's designed for. If I turn the current draw down. If I pull 200 milliamps, it's kicking out 4.7 volts. And that's 45 volts coming in. In 
fact that's 33 volts and it's still putting out 3 volts there if I drop my output current down to 120 milliamps it's 4.9 volts, 33 volts in, 4.9 volts out albeit with a horribly noisy waveform <laughs> that's the waveform let's, let's turn that back up 50 volts and that, that ripple is gone back up to 240 so at 240 volts yes it'll kick out an amp 100 volts no chance it's half an amp but I'm impressed that it did go below that right the way down to 40 volts and still managed to put out 5 volts albeit a greatly reduced current let's take a look inside getting it apart was quite easy I reached in there with a screwdriver managed to prise it and here is what's inside if you fold it out this is what you get here's the schematic once again they don't give a damn about our safety so I don't give a damn about their copyright something of note here there's no fuse there's no fuse in that little mains adapter there's no fuse in the adapter plug which connects to a 13 amp socket and if that's a 13 amp socket on the wall chances are that's break it at 32 amps that's the only protection on this a 32 amp MCB another thing worth looking at on the schematic before I take it off the screen take a look at pin 4 of that opto isolator which is only 473 ohms away from the negative side of the high voltage circuit which drops down to minus 240 volts 50 times a second now take a look at the circuit that's pin 4 and that's your 5 volt output there's not even a millimetre between those so the clearance between the high and the low voltage sides on this is sod all I think the only thing to describe that as, well apart from dangerous is disgraceful if you're going to copy some Apple design at least rip it apart and copy it properly don't just do some cheap nasty dangerous version of it it's almost like the Chinese are trying to solve the population crisis by booby trapping all their electrical goods. If you're going to do that, that's up to you. Don't bloody export it to us. All in all, I'm surprised that they've managed to cram a 5 volt and fairly well regulated power supply into such a small space. Unfortunately, I'm not surprised that they've done such a dangerous job of it. If you buy one of these things, for God's sake, put it in the bin before someone gets injured or electrocuted. I'm going to give this piece of crap the send off it deserves. Nice little burst of 415 volts in 3, 2, 1. There's a break that tripped. That's just gone dead short now, it just keeps tripping the breaker like that. And if it's dead short, it's only fit to see it to give it a proper send off. Thanks for watching. If you've got one of these things, for God's sake, chuck it in the bin.